Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all who are mothers of children, aunties of children, and mothers of four-legged critters. I'd like to welcome you here to Millwoods this morning. My name is Carol Hickman, and I'm a member of this congregation. This morning, some of us are here in person while others participate live on Facebook. Each Sunday, we gather to share and celebrate, to discuss our sacred values, and to confront the mysteries of love and life. We welcome you no matter where you may be in your spiritual quest or journey. Seekers, doubters, questioners, and believers are all welcome here. We also welcome you regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, or cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where all of us feel included and safe. We also acknowledge the land. This building in southeast Edmonton is on the traditional territory of Treaty 6, a traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route for many indigenous peoples. We honor and recognize the rich artistic, cultural, and spiritual traditions of the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Métis, Dene, Salto, and the many more indigenous communities that call this land we share home. Wherever we find ourselves this morning, let us remember the people who have cared for this land over thousands of years. All of us are treaty people for which we give thanks. Friends, I'm glad we can be together today. Every day at this church, people join in, reach out, and make a difference. To read more about the work of our church and upcoming events, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter, Watch the Buzz, on the church website. This e-newsletter is put out every Thursday. So now we come time for announcements. And I have a short one. We had a great success with the plant sales yesterday, but there are very few amount of some herbs and I think two, begonia, two begonias. Oh, petunias, sorry, not the same thing. And four chives left. So if you're interested in purchasing these after the service today, just let us know. And does anyone else have an announcement? I wonder what that box was Good morning. Called. My name is Mason. And yesterday, I had a lemonade stand at the craft sale here. I am pleased to announce that I was able to donate $118 toward DIP brain cancer research thanks to your generous donations. Thank you to everyone who supported me yesterday. Now that's a great act to follow. <laughs> Let's see you jump like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a month's time. Our tenth, that's why that ten is there. If any of you were asked, wondering why, why is there two numbers up there, or number up there? Our tenth anniversary for the Springcraft Market was yesterday. And I have to say it was a great success, and I think all of us would agree. So. Great job, everyone. Thank you so much. Let's give ourselves a little hug and a hand or whatever. It couldn't have happened without the assistance of so many people. And you run the risk of missing someone, and I, I totally respect that. There's just some super people involved behind the scenes in our office, Liliana, and our custodian, Bruce McCarran, that just make these things happen without any of us really knowing <laughs> what's going on. There's also some of us sitting here and some people that are taking the day off that were um, vital to the planning of all the success that went on in our plant sale, in our cafe, setting up. The setup and the takedown is one amazing job. and. Um, we had some wonderful, wonderful people doing that. You probably know who they are uh, because they always step up to do things. They always come to help. And I, I know that this 
market will not be able to continue without a small army of volunteers making it successful. Ten years ago, I did it with about four people, but we only had 20 vendors and we sold hot dogs. <laughs> like, times have changed and we need um, your support. We also had support from the weather guy yesterday, or the gods, and uh, we had perfect, perfect weather, almost too perfect, some, some would say. The financials have not been uh, concluded yet, all the uh, monies haven't come in, but I think it's very safe to say that we made over $5,000 yesterday. Um, in future weeks or in newsletters or the What's the Buzz, uh, I'm sure that there'll be a figure come forward in, in the next little while. Anyway, sincere thanks to all of you. Um, it was a blast, and I guess we're good for maybe a few more. So thanks again. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name's Don Grabinski. Uh, just, uh, I'm going to make an ask for help. Uh, speaking of not knowing what kind of goes on when we're not around, um, uh, the craft sale happened yesterday. Um, the bread run usually happens on Saturdays. Uh, I got the sign-in sheets. We had the bread run this morning before everyone uh, arrived, and I see no evidence again that it was ever, ever even here. Um, so it looks like we served about 40 families this morning before everyone arrived at church. Um, but we need help. We need help. We need volunteers for, for Saturdays uh, to help ha hand out the food. Uh, Time commitment, if anyone ha has the time to spare, is about 8 o'clock till 10.30, and we'd throw in the odd pickup for some bread at Sobeys to, to, to go along with that. So it's not a long time. It runs pretty easy. It just takes a couple of us, and we've got a great series of community volunteers to work with. We just have to be there and be able to guide them into what to do. So if anyone's interested at all in, in being able to do it on Saturdays, right now it's looking like about um, once a month, so if we can get a few more bodies, it'll be even less than that. Um, so if anyone's interested, please see me um, or Francisco, who's not here. He ran the bread run this morning, but um, yeah, thank you very much. So if you'd like to have an announcement heard by the church, please let the office know by the end of the week. Thanks to Len and Brian for music this morning and for Tim for doing our AV and for Gord. Hi. And now I welcome Dale. Thank you. Good morning. A uh, warm welcome to you folks and to those who are joining us online today. Uh, we apologize that last uh, Sunday um, we weren't able to, to do online service, but we're glad that you have joined us today. And a special welcome, if by chance she's walking, watching <laughs> Meridel from the hospital today. So, Meridel, we're glad you're worshiping with us. I want you to hear these words adapted from Ted Loader in Gorillas for Grace. Gentle us, Holy One, and to an unclenched moment, a deep breath, a letting go of heavy expectancies, a shriveling anxieties of dead certainties that softened by the silence and surrounded by the light and open to the mystery, we may be found by wholeness, upheld by the unfathomable, entranced by the simple and filled with the joy that is you. Remaining seated, let us sing, Come and Find a Quiet Center.
May this Christ candle reflect, reflect the bright flame of God, the flame of mercy, the flame of compassion, the flame of justice through our lives and in this community and throughout the world. And may the darkness never overcome it. Amen. Our gathering hymn today um, is a, a song must rise for the spirit to descend. We're going to be talking a lot about the spirit this morning, so we'll start right now. Let us stand and sing, a song must rise. Descend upon us this day. Touch us with your presence, your wisdom, your peace, your healing, your hope, your thirst for justice, your vision for tomorrow. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite the children to come up. And any child, anybody who identifies as a child, come on up. <laughs> They're right there. Oh, we got quite a crew today. There we go. Oh, the spot right there. Yeah, there you go. So I've got some pictures to show you today. What do we got here? Polar bear. And what, what's, who's with the polar bear? A baby polar bear. A baby polar bear. So we have a mama and a baby. Let's look at another one. Oh, we got some more polar bears. And they, these might be twins. There's two of them in there now. Two babies and a... Okay, another slide. You know what that is? A koala. 
and a baby koala. Mama and baby. Oh, look at that one. What's that? Kangaroo, you know that they, they see the baby in the pouch? Pocket. Yeah, front pocket. That's right. Yeah. Oh, now I always get lions and tigers confused. What do you think this one is? Uh, they're not. They're not lions and they're not tigers. What are they? Leopards, maybe? No, I don't think so. Lions, they are. I thought so. Yeah, lions. We got tigers coming. All right, next one. Oh, these are the, oh, I mean, the tall. They both look like brothers and sisters. But they're not. That, that's Bama and, and, and the little one. And, okay? Oh, 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 oh. Look at those ears. You know, somebody used to call me Dumbo when I was a kid because I had big ears. Yeah, it's terrible, but they're not that big, are they? No, no. Okay. Uh, another picture. Ho, ho, ho. A hippopotamus, that's right. Remember that song, All I Want for Christmas is a Hippopotamus? Yeah. Yeah, okay, another slide. There you go. Tigers. Tigers. They have black spots on their face. Well, they're, well, they're uh, stripes, yeah. And look at that baby, just cuddling right up there. Okay, another one. Oh. Panda bears. A panda with a, with a baby, holding the baby up. Okay, another one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Chicken, duck? I think it's a swan. Yeah. A swan. That's a big duck. It's a swan. And, and they're just, look at that, and the little babies. Yeah. They're, they're not very old because they're still growing their feathers. Isn't they? Okay, some more. Oh. Mother and a human. You know, I think we lost a picture. But I'll tell your story anyway. Is there, a, is there a monkey anywhere in your pictures? Oh, the monkey didn't get... That's monkey business is going on here. I have to tell you a story about monkeys, though, before we go on to look at more pictures. Um, so I had a, a picture of a, of a monkey and a baby monkey. But last week, I got to see an incredible video, thanks to Andrew. You know about this video. So he comes up on the... Now, wait a minute. Let's get to setting, right? So... Let's get the setting right. So this is in Morocco, and Andrew's father and mother were 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 traveling around Morocco, and they were there was this monkey that came up. It was your father's leg, I think. It started coming up a little monkey. Started coming up the leg. See if they can find some food. And there was a mother monkey right next door. And 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 have I got this right? The monkey starts to come up, jumps up, and starts coming up the leg. And what does the mother do? Boop. You get down, and then... <laughs> That's what the mother did. <laughs> gave, gave that little one a piece of her mind. You don't, you don't do that. So, yeah. So we're talking today about... One more slide. Mother's and Mother's Day. So I want you to stand up and turn around and shout as, long as, as loud as you can to all the people here, Happy Mother's Day. Can you stand up and do that? One... Two, three. Happy Mother's Day! Yay! <laughs> okay. Now we need you to stand, and we're going to turn around and we're going to sing like a rock. to Sunday school or back to your parents and your families and thank you.
Oh, oh, there we go. Here, let me give you a hand with that. Oh, there we go. That's what grandpa's are for. I can handle this. Okay, got it. He doesn't have to attack. I'm Jennifer McPhee. I'm here to give you a minute for mission. This one is called Moving Forward Together, United Against Hate, like the sign shows you. On February 15th this year, 2023, Mission and Service Partners, United in Learning, Affirming Connections, and Affirm United, Saffirme Ensemble, I don't correct my spent French, collaborated to host a webinar called United Against Hate. There's an alarming increase in violence and misinformation targeted against transgender folks and drag artists. The United Against Hate webinar provided context to allies who may have known the depth of the challenges faced by the Two-Spirit or LGBTQIA community and shared ideas on how best to support the community events that regularly face protests and barriers. Panelists also offered insights into building a safe and educational social, social media presence, including managing challenging discussion topics. The webinar was an overwhelming success, and with the live limit of 100 participants, it was, that number was reached. Those who couldn't attend were encouraged to watch the recording. Participants shared positive feedback and made action plans on how to move forward together. Your gifts to mission and service help support future events that will enable affirming communities of faith to truly live into the identity in practical and safe ways. Thank you. Scripture. Let us pray. May our hearts and minds be open so that as we listen to the words of Scripture, we might find wisdom for our living today. Amen. Scripture today is John 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, obey the command I give you. I will ask the one who sent me to give you another set, another helper to be with you always. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept, since the world neither sees her nor recognizes her, but you can recognize the spirit because she remains with you and will be within you. I won't leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. A little while now when the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live and you will live as well. On that day you will know that I am in God and you are in me and I am in you. Those who obey the commandments are the ones who love me and those who love me will be loved by Abba God. I too will love them and will reveal myself to them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. May I rest with understanding.
Would you pray with me? Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditation and reflection of each and every one of our hearts be truly graced and blessed by you, the one who has created us, the one who teaches us, and the one who sustains us. Amen. This is the sixth Sunday of Easter. We're still in Easter tide, and we continue our reflection during Easter tide on the church, and especially the church in this time and this place. Uh, the lectionary text for today is from the Gospel of John uh, that Dave read for us. Jesus is preparing his disciples and followers for Jesus' departure. And, and to assure them that they're not being abandoned, Jesus says this, If you love me and obey or keep the commandments I have given you, I will ask the one who sent me to another, to send you another, a paraclete, another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth. Paraclete, John's term for the spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit is variously paraphrased, advocate, counselor, comforter, helper, mediator. Um, when I was in training uh, to be a, a teaching supervisor as a chaplain, I was in a training group with a woman in Baltimore by the name of Sister Paracleta. Well, you know, I had never heard of the term paraclete before, and I thought she had the strangest name that I'd ever heard of until somebody informed me, Dale, don't you know what the paraclete is? No, I'm a Baptist. What do I know about paracletes? And, uh, and they said, well, it's another term for the Holy Spirit. So I stopped laughing at paracletes' name and uh, I appreciated that it, she got it in a very uh, special way. According to John, this text comes as Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. He says, I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you as the paraclete. You will not be alone. I will be with God, you will be with me, and I will be in you. I'm reminded when the, I hear those words, I'm reminded of the phrase from the modern uh, creed of the United Church, uh, God is with us, we're not alone in life, death, life beyond death. God is with us, we're not alone. According to some biblical scholars, the paraclete or the advocate is a force on the move. The story of Jesus and the story of the paraclete is a story not to, of private feelings and comfort, but of action. Jesus ate with the outcasts, healed and preached and traveled among the people, including the outcasts, the sinners, the lepers, the rejects of society. An active presence in a communal context. Jesus clearly promises his presence and the presence of the Spirit, the paraclete, to those who keep his commandments to love and to serve one another. To love Jesus' commands is not a feeling. The love Jesus commands is more than simply a feeling. The Jesus' commands is about a master washing the feet of his disciples. So the Song of Faith, Song of Faith is yet another statement of faith, uh, one of the creeds of the United Church. Hear these words. And so we sing of God the Spirit, who from the beginning has swept over the face of the nation, animating all energy and matter, and moving in the human heart. We sing of God the Spirit, the faithful, untamable, who is creatively and redemptively active in the world. The Spirit challenges us to celebrate the holy not only in what is familiar, but also in which that which seems foreign to us. We sing of the Spirit who seeks our prayers, who speaks our prayers in a deepest longing and enfolds our concerns, our confessions, transforming us and the world. That's one way of singing the Spirit. But there was an old gospel song I remember from my gospel days. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There's a sweet expressions on each face. 
And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for those blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we'll have revived when we shall leave this place. In many Western churches and denominations, the Holy Spirit is perceived as a feeling experienced by an individual. Sometimes it's a calming and reassuring, peaceful feeling. Sometimes it's exhilarating and reassuring, or re excuse me, exhilarating and leads to shouting and the waving of arms, hallelujah, dancing in the aisles and speaking in tongues. These uh, believers talk about being convicted by the Spirit or slain by the Spirit or even baptized by the Spirit. Even in the United Church, my friends, uh, it is possible to see someone wave their arms while singing a, a, a song in which they have been touched and moved by the Spirit as they sing. But I don't think this is the only way the Spirit that paraclete may be experienced or perceived. In addition to ecstatic explosions of sudden feelings of spiritual rapture, their paraclete may be perceived and experienced in a myriad of ways. A calming presence in the midst of a stormy time, a disturbing nudge that will not leave us alone, a sleep-robbing thought or question that will not go away, an aha moment when we finally see clearly what was previously confusing and distorted, a prayer silently uttered from the depths of our being, a challenge that causes us to re-examine our beliefs, our faith, our way of seeing the world. Or in other words, the Holy Spirit can be experienced as a comforting, supportive presence. Or the Holy Spirit can be experienced as a slap in the face. When we take actions to follow Jesus' command to love our neighbors, feed the hungry, care for the sick, tend to the poor, and join in solidarity with the oppressed and marginalized, then we are being touched and moved by the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So, when Don and Francisco organize and manage the bread run on Saturday mornings, or Sunday morning, as the case may be this week, the Holy Spirit is with them. When Kathy Bailey and and others, uh, we have Kathy Peckman, Carol Reed, uh, Sherry Alstad, and a host of others uh, organize the clothing bank and coordinate the distri distribution of clothes uh, for those in need. The Holy Spirit is there in and among them. It was the Holy Spirit moving in and among the people of Millwoods United Church that enabled this church to become a radically inclusive, affirming congregation where all are welcome, no matter who they love, how they look, no matter their gender or sexual orientation. It is the Holy Spirit moving in and among the United Church of Canada that enables us to move, sometimes kicking and screaming, towards healing and reconciliation with First Nations and Métis people of Canada. So as Millwood's United Church prepares to welcome our new minister and step into the future that awaits us, how might the paraclete or the Holy Spirit be moving in and among us this day? What might the Spirit be nudging or even challenging us to do? In 1988, there was a watershed moment in the United Church of Canada. In the midst of controversy and dissension, the church voted to open its doors and allow full membership, including ordination, to gays and lesbians. It was a heated debate, and the conflicts did not end with the vote. Some churches chose to remove themselves from the United Church. Some individuals chose to leave their church. Uh, years later, and some of those people returned, yet others did not. I believe the United Church made the right decision, a decision in 
inspired by the Holy Spirit, a decision that reflects God's love and compassion, a decision that reflects God's passion for justice. As a result, the United Church is one of the most inclusive, welcoming Christian denominations in the world. And Millwoods is a radically inclusive, affirming congregation where all are welcome. But let me be clear. This decision was not made without experiencing uncomfortable challenges and feelings that come when things change. Sometimes the Holy Spirit can be a very disruptive and disturbing experience. So in 2023, our new minister identifies as non-binary and prefers the pronouns they and them as opposed to he or she or her or his. Well, my friends, a non-binary person essentially invites the world not to assign them a gender, but rather to relate to them as the unique individual and child of God that they are. Well, now, this is going to be a challenge for us, at least for some of us. Uh, whether we are challenged to function, whenever we are challenged to function differently, to change our familiar patterns of seeing and perceiving the world, it's uncomfortable. And I suggest that even as we prepare to receive and welcome Eli into our community of faith, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, is busy at work in and among us, calling us to respond in compassion and love as Jesus did, calling us to respond with justice as Jesus did, calling us to embrace the spirit of truth in and among us, even as uncomfortable as that may be. For the God seen in Jesus is the God reflected in us when we allow ourselves to be touched and to be led by the Holy Spirit. May it be so. Amen. Did you, did you recognize that at all? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> uh, this one you'll recognize, though. She comes sailing on the wind. It's Voices United, number 380. Let us stand and sing together.
I like that song, but it's one of the longest, I think, uh, in our hymnal. This is a time in which we give thanks for the many ways that we have been blessed by God and have an opportunity to share our blessings with others. Do we have any information up here about offering today? We do have information. Uh, through PAR, e-transfers, credit card, check, cash, we take it all. <laughs> Uh, any way that you would like to, to share. Um, we also uh, have to acknowledge that it's not simply uh, through our treasures, but we also give, as we've seen this weekend, through time and talent, we offer uh, for the ministry of this church. Uh, will the ushers please re receive the morning offering? <laughs> Let us stand and sing together, hallelujah, give thanks. thank you for the many ways you bless us and touch our lives. Receive now our offerings. May it be used to touch this community and this world with your presence, your love, your compassion, your hope, and your justice. Amen. Please be seated. It's uh, time to look at our joys and share our joys, our concerns, our gratitudes, but it's also the second Sunday of the, of the month, and the second Sunday of the month, we've been celebrating birthdays. I wonder if anybody got older this, this month, or is going to get older. Oh, <laughs> oh, Diane, too. Oh, <laughs> Owen, ah! <laughs> who, who, Gord just gave me the evil grin, or evil, the, the death stare, I think. He's, I don't grow older anymore. He's an accountant. He takes, never mind. <laughs> he makes it, he adjusts the books a bit. So, we, and anniversaries? Anybody have an anniversary of this? Oh, yeah. Let, then now, these two, I don't know if they know each other, but they had an anniversary. <laughs> oh, you, uh, Kathy Peckman had an anniversary. 48 years. Oh. My word, that, no, that's, uh, that's something. Yeah. How many years for you folks? How many? How many? 50. 50? Oh. So, we're going to sing happy birthday, but we're going to sing these words. You have to remember this now. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. These special occasions we celebrate with you. All right? Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you.
50 years? Oh my gosh. I was, never mind. Um, now, joys, concerns, gratitude. What do we have to share today? Oh, let, yes, there's a hand up over there and a microphone's coming your way. I have two today. Um, my first one is I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who supported Mason in his lemonade stand journey yesterday. He just blossomed, and I, I can just see him being a CEO someday, and so <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for supporting him, and he's, I've never, I never thought in a million years he'd go up and do an announcement like that all by himself today, so thank you so much to everybody who, you know, gave us the table and the time and the money yesterday. It was, it was really awesome, so thank you to everybody. Oh, great. Um, my second one is um, a call for prayers. Uh, you probably all heard about the horrible attack at Crawford Plains School last Friday, or two Fridays ago now, um, where uh, one of the, the students there was horribly attacked and, and murdered. Um, and the school is just reveling and barely holding on by threads. I talked to the principal on Friday, and she's, she's barely uh, holding Holy together. Spirit. She's barely holding together. Um, the teacher that saved the little girl that survived, she's barely holding together. Um, the whole school's in a, in a very big state of grief and mourning right now. And luckily, my kiddos are not really aware of what happened. Uh, they didn't really know the student. Um, so I'm thankful for that. But uh, there's a lot of sadness and grief happening in that community right now. So if you could just all hold them in your prayers. What's the name of the school? Crawford Plains. Crawford. Crawford Plains. Plain, got it. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm over 50. I have a hard time hearing. Okay, thank you. Are there other? We, uh, while they're bringing the microphone up, we've got over here, we have Kathy Bailey going in for knee surgery on Thursday. So we're going to. Yay! <laughs> So we're going to be holding you uh, in, in, in our prayers. I know there were a lot of people that did a lot of work yesterday, but I just wanted to acknowledge Carol Reed, who got here at 8 o'clock in the morning and kept that elevator going till 4 o'clock, helping people up and down the different floors. So thanks, Carol, for being a real trooper. said prayers for my mom. She's doing great. Okay. And I also want to say we uh, were blessed with a baby on Thursday. Oh, okay. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Also, also on Thursday evening in our family, uh, my brother-in-law, Enrico, uh, had a kidney transplant in, in uh, Vancouver. Uh, he's been going through dialysis for some time, and it suddenly he called to the hospital. And so I just saw a video this morning. He's, he and his, he's holding on to his wife, walking down the hallway in the hospital. So he's making progress. Um, and uh, so, so uh, we remember Enrico in our press. Are there others? If not, let us remain seated as we sing uh, our uh, hymn of prayer, Lord. Listen to your children praying. It's not that one. Because I don't have my glasses on, I can't see it. It's Breathe on Me, Breath of God, because it's a spirit song, right? Yeah. Thank you, Brian, for straightening me out. your spirit, Holy One. Pour out your spirit upon the people of Ukraine and, and Sudan and other war-torn places in our world, and touch the victims of violence and terror with your healing, your hope, and your sustaining presence. 
Pour out your Spirit on refugees throughout the world who are seeking asylum and safety in the U.S., in Canada, in Europe. Pour out your Spirit and soften the hearts of those who, out of fear and possibly hatred, refuse to treat refugees with dignity and respect. Pour out your Spirit, Holy One, on those seeking justice, those fighting racism, homophobia, sexism, xenophobia. May they be filled with the courage and strength to continue their fight. Pour out your Spirit, Holy One, upon your people. Hear our prayers, O God. We pray for those who are recovering from surgery and those awaiting surgery, those living with chronic conditions that inhibit their ability to embrace and enjoy life. We remember uh, the teachers, the principal, and everyone involved with the Crawford Plain School as they seek to rebound from a horrible tragedy of violence that has struck their community. We pray for those who struggle with addiction, those who are ill and are recovering from illness, and those who live with grief and loss. Hear our prayers, O God. And now be with us as we sing the prayer of Jesus. closing hymn is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. We're singing the first and third verses, and let us stand and sing together.
friends, as we prepare to leave this place, may you always know that you're held by a love that will never let you go for in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we're not alone. And as we walk into the world that awaits us, may we have the heart, the eyes, the faith to see the face of Christ in everyone we meet, and may everyone we meet see the face of Christ in us. May it be so. Our, our sending forth song is when we walk from here. Please be seated.